Okay, so first of all, I have a set of data here in an Excel spreadsheet, and I want to convert this data into a pivot table. However, this is a task that I perform on a regular basis. And so instead of making the pivot table every single time, I want to create a macro which will do it for me. Now the way macros work in Excel is that one time you perform, you record yourself performing the task and then afterwards you can run the macro again and it will perform those same steps again and it is much quicker. So first of all in order to do this you need the developer tab. In order to get that you need to right click and go to customize the ribbon then click on, then tick the developer tab and select OK. And then once you have the developer tab, you can select record macro. Then you can give the macro a name and a shortcut key and decide where to store it. The best place to store a macro is the personal macro workbook. That means so long as you are on the same computer, you can use the macro in any Excel spreadsheet and OK. Now up here it has changed to stop recording so I know the macro is now recording so I'm going to create my pivot table. I'm going to select cell A1 and then do control shift right arrow to select the whole of the top row and then do control shift down arrow to select the whole of the table. Then I'm going to do control T to create an official Excel table and OK. Then I'm going to select summarize with pivot table and OK. Now I'm going to make my pivot table. I'm going to move number to the rows section and substance to the columns section and then concentration to the values section. Then I'm going to change the value field settings to average. Then I'm going to go to design and remove the grand totals. And now I have my pivot table. So I'm going to go to the developer tab and select stop recording. Now I need to save this. And then when I try and close this spreadsheet, it will ask me if I want to save the macro that I just created. And I'm going to say yes. And now if I open a copy of that report, this is the exact same data that I had before. Now I can go to the developer tab and select macros. And then this is the macro that I just made and I'm going to run it. And now you can see it has made the pivot table for me and that was much quicker than if I'd made it myself. Now if I close this without saving it, I can open it up again and run through the macro a step at a time so we can see what is actually happening. So if I press Alt F11, it will open up Microsoft Visual Basic for applications. And if I open up the personal macro workbook and then open up modules and then double click module one, it has now opened up macro one, which is the macro I just made. Now, if I split screen this, I can run through this macro a step at a time and we can see what it's doing. To do this, I'm going to need to press F8 and it's going to go through the macro a line at a time. So the first thing it's going to do is select cell A1. So when I press F8, you can see up here it's selected cell A1. Now this line here is when I did control shift right arrow so when I run this, it's going to select the whole of the top row. Then the next line is when I did control shift down arrow. So when I press F8, it's going to select all of the table. And you can see it's done that. Then this line here is when it created the table. So when I run that, it's going to make the table. Then this line here is going to add in a new sheet. 
So when I do that, it creates a new sheet. This line here creates the pivot table for me. So you can see it's made the pivot table. Then this line here opens up the pivot table editing window. So you can see that's now popped up. Now all of this information here is a bunch of default information that comes with a pivot table. Then this section here is when I added number to the rows section and you can see that's now popped up. Then I added substance to the columns section and that's now appeared. Then I added concentration to the values section and that's now appeared. Then I changed that to average and that's changed. Then I removed the grand totals from the column and then the grand totals from the rows and now that is the end of the macro. So I'm going to close this. So you can see the first time we ran the macro, it did that all in one go really quickly. So it works much more quickly than if you make a pivot table yourself. But it is just running through the steps that you performed when you recorded the macro. Now, if I close this, I'm going to open up a very similar report You can see here this has all the same columns, but it has different compounds and a different number of rows. So in order to get the macro to work for this, I'm going to have to edit it slightly. So if I do Alt F11 again, and I'm going to open up that macro. Now at the moment, it is making the table here using a specific cell range. It's going all the way till C40. If I have a look at this table, it goes past C40. So I need to change this code slightly. And it's a nice easy change. I just need to delete the range here and change this to selection. So we'll then use whatever area I have selected at the time to make my table. And because of this code up here, I know what area is going to be selected because the first thing it's going to do is select A1. Then this line here is when I did Control, Shift and right arrow. So it will select the whole of the top row. And if I have a different number of rows in here, a different number of columns in here, it will select all of those columns. Then the next line did control shift and down arrow. So if I do control shift and down arrow, it will just go down to the bottom of the table, regardless of how many rows there are. So it doesn't matter how big my table is, it will still select all of it and then convert it into table one. Now I'm going to save this and close it and make this full screen again. And now if I go back to the developer tab and run the macro again, you can see it's made my pivot table for me and it's just slightly different because it now has different compounds and a different number of rows. Okay, so in this video, I have shown you how to make a pivot table using a macro in Excel and that is everything.